Hey guys, welcome back to Keys to the Cosmos. This is video number 13 in my series, Astrophotography Target Tips. And for this video, we're going back to another galaxy as our target. In fact, we're going after the Triangulum Galaxy. Now, hopefully you saw my video on Andromeda a couple of videos ago, number 10. That was a really special image, probably my uh, favorite image to date and probably my best one, I would say, in my opinion as well. I really enjoyed uh, capturing that and I've always wanted to capture Triangulum Galaxy. It's right in the vicinity of Andromeda. In fact, it's one of our neighbors, us, the Milky Way, Andromeda, and Triangulum. Those three are all very close to each other. And Triangulum is the second closest uh, galaxy to us here in the Milky Way, and the second biggest, as it appears anyway, in our skies. So it's always been on my list. I've never imaged it before, or at least last year when I started. So I, I wanted to get out fairly early in the season and, and capture it, and I was able to do that over two nights. So we're going to talk all about how to locate it, how to um, capture data on it, and of course, how to process it as well. I'll try to keep this video fairly short. So first of all, a little bit about Triangulum. As I mentioned, it's the second closest to us. Uh, I think Andromeda is 2.5 billion light years away. This is 2.7, so not too much farther away. It is a smaller galaxy. Um, somewhere around 50 billion stars, I believe, and compared to Andromeda, which is like one plus trillion stars, you can imagine, uh, and being slightly farther away, it's not nearly as bright as Andromeda and not nearly as big, but it's still fairly substantial. I used my uh, Sharp Star 76 millimeter uh, telescope. Now I'd say that's a, a fairly good telescope. If you got a little bit bigger one, maybe an 80 millimeter or even 100 millimeter, that would be perfect for getting nice and close on Triangulum, but this was definitely sufficient at 339 millimeters of focal length. I had to do a little bit of a crop to get it nice and nice and up front, but I would say that's a, a great telescope to use if you have something like this. Uh, you could probably get away with the Red Cat as well. Going to be a little bit of a, you're going to sink more time. And it's going to be quite a significant crop, but you could probably do it as well. So either one, either of those telescopes works great. Now as well, I used my, uh, L Pro um, filter. I've talked about this one with the uh, Andromeda Galaxy. It's a great match for not only this telescope, but you can't see it. It's attached on the end here. My ASI 294 MC Pro camera, cooled camera that is. So that's everything I use to capture. I always forget to mention some of that stuff in my video. So I thought I'd do that right off the top. First of all, how do you locate the Triangulum Galaxy? It's fairly easy to find. Um, because it is uh, somewhat large and, uh, you know, it's not going to be a tiny dot on the back of your camera, you should be able to find it fairly easy, even with the 30-second test shot. Now, in my Andromeda video, we talked about how to find that. We use the constellation Cassiopeia, the top three stars point in that vicinity, and we use that star Mirac, that bright orange star Mirac in the eastern sky. Um, fairly easy to see, even in Bordel 9 skies here in Toronto. Once you find that star Mirac, Andromeda is just up and to the left. Now the nice thing about Triangulum is on the same plane, okay, so sort of draw a line from Mirac up to Andromeda, but this time extend it down and through Mirac. So now instead of going up and to the left from Mirac, we're going down and to the right. And almost the exact same distance down, that's where Triangulum is. So it's fairly easy to find. There's not a lot of stars around it though, that's what's a little bit tricky. So with Andromeda, we had that star above Mirac up and to the left as sort of a halfway point, And then we knew Andromeda was about double that. With Triangulum, I, at least in my Bordel 9, I can't really see a star in between Mirac and Triangulum itself. So for that reason, it's a little bit more tricky. But there is another star that you can use to sort of help um, give you a little bit more context of, as to how far down you need to go. So the constellation, uh, I should have mentioned, Triangulum itself is found in the con constellation Triangulum. How fitting is that? And according to its name, it's uh, three stars that make up Triangulum. It sort of looks like a, a triangle on its side. So that uh, you can see in the image here, that star on the far right, I think it's called Moth Allah, something like that. That is below Triangulum. And if we look at that star and going back up to Mirac, Triangulum is somewhere in the middle. It's a little bit down and closer to Moth Allah but that sort of gives you a little more context. So if you look closely in your skies, you should be able to find that star. And once you do and you find Mirac, now you have some context. Um, Triangulum is just sort of in the middle, a little bit closer toward Mothala, and it's a little bit off to the right. So I actually found that that was easier than just sort of star hopping 
down from Murak. So hopefully you guys find the same and hopefully these images helped. But if you find that star Moth Ala, up and to the right, and you may need a couple of times to find it, but it shouldn't take you too long. And once you find it on a 30 second test shot with a good filter like the L Pro, you should see it pop up very clearly on your the back of your camera or on your tablet, depends what you're using, if you're using an ASI Air like I am. So that's where to locate it. Let's talk about integration time. In my case, I shot it over uh, two nights and had a total of seven and a half hours, which was definitely more than sufficient. Fairly happy with the image. I got a decent amount of detail and it was fairly easy to process because of that amount of integration time. If you're only able to do one night, I would say try to get at least three hours. This is not the kind of target you're going to want to shoot on a full moon. Definitely not, particularly with a, a filter like this that's not really harsh. It's not going to block out a ton of light pollution and a ton of uh, moonlight or something like that. Make sure that triangulum is fairly high in the sky. I would recommend at least 30 degrees, 30, 35 degrees, just to get up and out of that light pollution if you're anywhere here like we are here in Toronto. And, um, you know, sink at least three hours if you can into it and you should get a fairly decent image with some nice detail to it. Um, here's my single exposure. So again, this is using the Sharp Star, using the L Pro filter, and the ASI 294MC Pro. You can see fairly clearly here, you can even see a little bit of detail, you can kind of see some of the spiral arms. Um, and as you notice here, as we talked about, it's a face-on galaxy. So it's not as edge-on as Andromeda, this is more of a face-on galaxy. So you can see all of those spiral arms, which is really nice and something a little bit more unique. As a lot of those galaxies we see are edge-on galaxies. So let's talk about processing. So here's my stacked image before we do that. This is seven and a half hours, not a whole lot to see as usual. You can see a little bit of the core, but very little and just a few surrounding stars. Pretty typical for my sky conditions here in Toronto. But processing is, I would say it's medium difficulty. It's not super easy. It's not like, you know, a bright emission nebula target. Uh, I find galaxies are always a little bit tricky particularly when they're a little bit more faint, like Triangulum is compared to something like Andromeda. But at the same time, even with just a few curves, stretches, and levels adjustments, you're gonna find it starts to pop out very quickly. So once you've done that, and you know, which we do on every picture, we talk about that all the time. And of course, using that sampler in the levels adjustment box on the far right, um, using the middle one, and then clicking on the back of the screen, on the background of your, pic of your image, just to sort of uh, fix the oftentimes wonky colors that you get from doing your curve stretches. So once you've done that, you're happy with the tone and you're, and the galaxy itself has popped out from the background and you're noticing if you try to stretch it anymore, it starts to blow out. That's where you want to stop, okay? You've got the shape of the galaxy and now you're going to do more fine adjustments. So what I did is I lassoed off the galaxy itself. Now one thing I do want to mention, when you lasso off a galaxy, you know, think about a galaxy, right? It's It's you know, billions and sometimes even in the case of Andromeda, trillions of stars all in this sort of fairly tight form or formation, you know, given the immense size of space. And all together with that bright core, they're emitting this beautiful light, this glow from around it. So in order to sort of incorporate that glow, don't, don't lasso up really tight into those spiral arms. Give yourself a little bit of room. And by doing that, you're gonna, it kind of gives the illusion of sort of a nice soft glow emitting from that galaxy. I sort of imagine picturing it from a long distance away and as you approach it, you start to see the glow of that galaxy um, before you see those fine details in it. And so that's what I try to do when I'm processing. Give yourself some room, lasso a little bit off from the spiral arms themselves and that'll give you room to sort of give that illusion of sort of a glow coming off it. It's, it's something you need to be careful with. We'll talk about that more in a minute, but if you go too far with it, it to me it looks unnatural. And now you've gone too far out and it looks, you know, it's hard to get a very sort of gradient to that glow, whereas it's not just a, a bright white light around the, the uh, galaxy itself. But give yourself a little bit of room. And what you're going to want to do is just like Andromeda, you're going to want to flip back and forth from uh, editing the galaxy itself to working on the background and switching back to the galaxy itself to switching back to the background. The way we do that, we've talked about that many times in Photoshop, you go up at the top to select and you're gonna to wanna to go to select inverse. So once it's been lassoed off and you've worked on the galaxy a little bit, 
Now you select inverse and now you're working on everything but the galaxy. So in other words, the background. So in that first go around with the galaxy, after you've done your curve stretches and adjust your levels adjustments, I use camera raw filter and I just work on like texture, clarity, all the usuals that we always talk about, just to sort of start to bring out more fine detail of the galaxy itself. And all at the same time, just doing minor adjustments and not making it look unnatural. So once you've done that sort of that first round of processing using the camera filter, we go inverse, select inverse, and now we try to fix that background. I get a lot of questions about how do you get the background to look even and um, soft and not too much of a contrast from the galaxy itself. And that is always a challenge. It's hard with galaxies to get a nice even background. If you're shooting in Boreal 3 and you're syncing a ton of integration time, it's probably not going to be that hard. But with Boreal 9, with sky gradients and, and all kinds of weird things we get uh, in the background, it can be a real challenge. One of the tools I always use, I've talked about it before, is using Gradient Exterminator. It's an add-on that you need to purchase for Photoshop. It's not too expensive. I think 60 or $80, something like that. But I use it all the time. And it really does help to sort of smooth out that background. Even with, um, you know, waiting for trying them to get higher in the sky, I did still have a little bit of sky glow and a little bit of uh, gradient. So in order to smooth that out and get it more even, I use Gradient Exterminator. And I find it does work best when you've lassoed off the galaxy and you're only working on the inverse. So as opposed to working on the entire image and using Gradient Exterminator, wait until you've done a little bit of processing, wait until you've uh, worked on the, the galaxy itself and now you switch to inverse, now use Gradient Exterminator. So all it's working on is um, that background. And once you use it, it, um, it, I find it's a lot more effective and you get a better result. So once you've done Gradient Exterminator or whatever add-on you used uh, to sort of get that background more even, then I use Camera Raw Filter and I work on like things like shadows, um, your black point, lowering those going to the left, uh, I lower exposure just a touch to get it down. And um, what else? Oh, luminance is important too. So uh, that's, a, that's in another tab in Camera Raw Filter. Just sort of a little bit of luminance, sliding that to the right just to give it a soft feel. Play with that. Do minor adjustments and then sort of click off and check the image. Does it look natural? How does the um, galaxy itself look compared to that now edited uh, or process background. Does it look natural? Is it too much of a contrast? Flip back and forth. Work on the galaxy, then work on the background. Just like in drama, you're going to go back and forth and see how much you can push the galaxy itself, push the texture, push the clarity without it looking too much and too grainy um, and unnatural. So that's a matter, I mean, what looks natural is a matter of opinion, right? Some guys like it a really soft feel on, on Triangulum. Some you'll see it's a lot more textured and, and uh, a lot more crisp compared to the background. Mine, I think, is somewhere in the middle. I think it is leaning a little bit towards textured. I like to see details in galaxies. And um, there's not a ton of detail in Triangulum compared to something like Andromeda, so I wanted to get as much as I can. Other than that, I think, you know, it's just a matter of playing around with it. Get Focus on the background. That's what took me the longest with my Triangulum, was trying to get that background right. And, uh, you know, a sufficiently dark color to make it look like space, but at the same time, uh, not too much of a contrast from the galaxy itself. But it's something you're gonna have to play with. Take your time, it may take you two or three tries, who cares? There's no rush to, to get it out. Take your time and, and, and do the best you can. But the more integration time you get, the better your data. So in other words, you're not imaging Triangulum at 20 degrees when there's a ton of sky glow. Wait till it gets a little bit higher. You know, it may mean staying up a little bit later, but I think you'll find it's worth it in the end. I think I started imaging, I, I, I alluded to it earlier, but I think I imaged at like 35 degrees and above. Here in Toronto with Southern and with the, you know, the light pollution that we have, anything under 35 degrees and it just looks too washed out. So if you're in light polluted skies like me, particularly in the eastern sky, wait till it gets a little bit higher. Your data will be that much cleaner and it'll be that much easier to process. So that's part of it as well when I get those questions. It might be that you're imaging too low in the sky Wait till it gets a little higher and that will really help. And you won't be relying on something like Gradient Exterminator as much in order to get that nice, clean, consistent background. I hope that helped, guys. 
Uh, if you've never given uh, Triangle a go, I really recommend it. It's pretty, pretty much prime time now, between now and the next couple months. Sink some time into it. Make sure you got the right conditions. We're going into new moon this week, so this is a perfect opportunity to, to give it a go. And uh, point your telescope towards it, and let's see what you can get. Thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate your support, your questions, your comments uh, here on YouTube, on uh, Instagram, key, at Keys of the Cosmos. I'm on Twitter as well, Keys to the Sea, I think it's called on Twitter. But uh, anyway, you can, anytime you want to reach out and any comments, uh, suggestions, uh, questions that you have, I'm happy to respond as best I can. But I'll have much more coming your way. I'm hoping to get that new man out. I'm, I'm waiting on counterweights for it. I know you guys are probably wondering why I don't have more videos on it. Unfortunately, this will be mentioned in my review video. They do not give you enough counterweights for anything substantial. So I'm dying to get some counterweights. They're on back order, but apparently they're coming soon. So I'll be able to put on some of my bigger telescopes, including that Edge HD, which I'm dying to use. But I'll have videos on that soon. I also got a new astrophotography um, cooled camera to go along with my ASI 294 MC Pro. I'm going to be talking about that very soon, so look out for that. We'll talk about the differences between the two cameras and so much more. Thanks again, guys. Really appreciate it. And I will see you on the next one. Here's my image of Triangular Galaxy. Take care.